My fellow panelists, Dr. H.R. Negindaraji, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, namaskar. It is my privilege and honor to be here among you, and I would like to thank India Foundation and the Center for Soft Power for putting me together in this wonderful confluence of people and ideas. Power as a concept often tends to be defined in a tangible or a hard terms. But in our world, for a long time now, real power perhaps lies somewhere else. There is no doubt that nations can manage more without force using the three pillars of soft power, defined by Joseph Nye as the originator of the concept, political values, culture, and foreign policy. One of India's greatest strengths lies in its culture, and what makes it even greater is the millions of individual sources of soft power, like people like you and me and many others. Imagine an underweight baby weighing a little over a kilogram at time of birth. Imagine a childhood spent battling illness, both known and unknown. Teenage life, accustomed, consumed by a quest to seek answers that plague you night and day and a lot of suffering. Now imagine that underweight baby who while growing up survived lupus, septicemia, and cancer. And for people who don't know what is septicemia here, septicemia is a condition when the whole blood gets inflamed and attacked by the antibodies. And rarely people survived this. I have survived this situation. <laughs> and I stand here today in front of you because God has gifted me one thing, yoga. Yoga practice. The greatest gift for humanity from India, what I call my second home. For thousands of years, the world has been blessed to have holistic approach to health and well-being, not just for us as individuals, but also strikes harmony between man and nature. Till I was 18, I never had a day where my ill health did not pull me down in some way. I even had to stop school for one year. A few days of doing basic yoga asanas made me forget all the pain and filled me with the hope that I too could have a normal life one day. As the Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji told the United Nations General Assembly in his maiden speech in 2015, yoga embodies the unity of mind and body, thought and action, restraint and fulfillment, and it's not about exercise, but to discover the sense of oneness with yourself, the world, and nature. We often talk about soft powers, and the influence they wield in bridging countries. And today, I stand here in front of you. I can assure you that is far more effective than any policy or bilateral agreements between nations. Every year, India gets approximately around 10 million visitors from all over the world coming to you to learn yoga and become the ambassadors of its love and its greatness in the heartbeat. Today, the Prime Minister Modiji's vision that made the International Day of Yoga a reality has transformed the lives of practitioners like me around the world, and thought if we have formed an emotional bond with India, in 2018, my company, Nof International, began importing handicrafts and handlooms from India. A decade ago, everyone in Saudi Arabia wanted to import goods from China. And they were wary of India, despite the traditional connection with India. There was something that the two countries and the youth from the two countries were not able to embrace each other. In Saudi, 
the Indian community would think twice before interacting with Saudis outside of their workplace. And Saudis will feel distant from the Indian diaspora, which is one of the largest in my country. I saw a resurgence in my country's main interest in India from the time I started teaching yoga and speaking about Ayurveda in Riyadh and Jeddah. The fascination with yoga and by extension yoga increased manifold after the first international day of yoga. Everywhere I went, people asked me about India. Many of you here would think a Saudi fallen in love with yoga an American benefiting from Ayurveda, or a Japanese national excelling at Bharat Natyam, is a success of India's soft power. It is something more than that. Since I have been practicing yoga, India was the last place one would connect to it despite yoga originated here. American companies would certify yoga and have the right to approve or disapprove. The fact that this is changing as I'm standing here and as Dr. Nagindara has mentioned about the Ayush ministry and the QCI regulations of the yoga system, it is really changing. And this is the success of soft power. The International Day of Yoga is an epoch-making change that has made Indians aware of their power. There are many changes taking place in Saudi Arabia as well, and they are truly empowering women. Be it women being allowed to drive or visit football matches, cinema theaters are opening up, and making wearing an abaya or the cover is an optional choice have happened in the last couple of years. Many of these changes, especially what one would call soft, in this aspect, sports, sports has played a great and important role. Many years ago, a lot of women in Saudi Arabia started many sports in their own circles like me, and now they lead in their fields. The appointment of Her Royal Highness Princess Rima bint Bandar Al Saud as the deputy of the sports authority has been a watershed moment. That can, what can be a bigger example of women empowerment in Saudi Arabia through sports than my friend Lean and Maina, who has been appointed as a member of Majlis Ashura in 2016. The Shura Council is a formal advisory body of Saudi Arabia with the power to propose laws to the king and the powers to interrupt laws with Lena being and Princess Rima in the General Sports Authority. It is not, not less, nothing less than a new dawn for women's sports and authority in Saudi Arabia. Many of my friends in Jeddah, both Saudis and Indians as well, from the Indian community, suddenly rediscovered each other around 2015 when the first United Nations International Day of Yoga took place. There was a great buzz about understanding yoga and learning yoga with each passing year. The number of people only increased. I myself have trained more than 8,000 people in yoga since 2004. And I, <laughs> and I have certified around 600 people and there are women teaching around Saudi Arabia yoga in every city you can imagine. I'm grateful that our authority approved the listing of yoga as a sport in November 2017. And with the help of Princess Rima and emotional support, she extended to my journey in every step. If the average Saudi and I don't mean the ones hailing from bigger cities like Riyadh and Jeddah rediscovered India through yoga. The Indian in Saudi Arabia found a friend in the Prime Minister Modiji and the Minister of External Affairs Srimati Sushma Suraji. During their visit to my country, both inspired every Indian living to be the ambassadors in their own way. 
And for the information, India was the guest of honor this year in Saudi Arabia for the traditional festival of Janad Riyah. And yoga was the theme. I'll show you pictures where yoga was the whole theme of that event. If Modiji came across a visionary, as a, a visionary leader to not just the Desi community in Saudi Arabia, but also young Saudis like us, I'm so surprised in several meetings regarding sports or other events, many people knew about the yoga day and knew about Narendra Modiji's um, visions and support for yoga. Sushmaji embraced the NRIs like an elder in the house who made sure nothing could harm them once they became her family. Some critics could say these are political overtures, but what they don't take into consideration is the connection that people of our two countries have formed and thanks to yoga and the Indian cuisine and the films. Our cultures have a deeper common bond than most of us would know. Did you know that the Hijazi sweets in Saudi Arabia are similar to Indian sweets and we still call them laddus? Hijaz is where I come from. It's the region of Mecca and Medina and Jeddah. And we still, sometimes the old people will call the women dress the kurta. And we used to Im import the bridal dresses from, the Indi from India even in the 40s and before in Hijaz. We still cook biryani in special occasions. I feel proud that my own in my own capacity, I'm playing a role in bringing our cultures closer. The stronger ties that our countries have formed under the Prime Minister Modi and our King, uh, King Salman bin Abdulaziz, and the personal rapport that Modi and his, uh, and his Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman share, is an inspiration for Saudis as myself and Indians within this room. <laughs> Cities and towns as well across India and Saudi Arabia. It's not a regular thing when young Saudis from tribal regions such as Al-Aflaj, Al-Kharj, and Al-Ghassim make a beeline and travel to India to learn more about yoga and the culture. It is something extraordinary, and we are all part of it. In the end, I would once again like to express my thanks to India's foundation and the Center for Soft Power for giving me the chance to be here and share this experience with you. I would like to show a small presentation, it just uh, to show the journey of yoga in Saudi Arabia. And um, do I have? Is this the one? Yes. Okay. So I'll explain about some pictures. Um, this is in the National Guard Hospital. It's a military hospital. And it's about breast cancer. We spoke about yoga for breast cancer. And uh, the two are, one is a doctor, and she's a yoga teacher. And the other one is um, a health educator. And she's also a yoga teacher who is now in India, in Rishikesh, learning some yoga. Uh, this is from our initiative for multiple sclerosis with King Abdulaziz University in Jeddah. And we were sponsors. We, since 2004, provide free training and free classes for people with autoimmune diseases and cancer. So we, we extended our support to the MS Foundation. This is a big event happened with the Gold Gym in all their branches, and it was about yoga and breast cancer. And we could not accommodate the number of women came to the centers to attend the classes for yoga and breast cancer. This is, um, this actually is a training program we have done for, a group of uh, yoga students with the support of the consulate of India. And this was the graduation. And she's one of the best students. She's a horse rider. Uh, she's a Saudi lady as well. And she's a very dedicated yoga practitioner. 
She spoke about her journey with depression and how yoga helped her on TV. This is also from our programs with the Indian Consulate. This is also one of our programs. This was in the American Consulate. And actually, the wife of the consul herself attended our classes for eight months continuously. And she had an event with us. This was a trail. We were trying to see if Saudi women will wake up at 6 a.m. on a Friday, which is off in Saudi Arabia, and come to practice yoga. And we were surprised, surprised with 110 women came, and we started at 7 a.m. sharp. <laughs> this is a speech I gave about naturopathy, career guidance, and yoga in the Indian school in India. And this is about the yoga day we have done in Saudi Arabia for the Indian school for the kids. This is also the first yoga day. People were laughing on the stage. We had an expert for laughter yoga. So we have eminent personalities and diplomats are standing there, some public figures, and all are laughing. This is from this embassy in Riyadh. She is also one of our students, Sara. She is a very advanced practitioner, and she led the Yoga Day protocol in the embassy in 2016, 17, I think. And this is from 2017. This Yoga Day celebration happened with the support of uh, Saudi sports authorities. This was the event. And many people came. We have people from different nationalities. This is from an event in Riyadh. And this is a beautiful article about Saudi women being engines for change. And she spoke about particularly yoga. Um, this is the first official event under the support of Sports Authority of Saudi Arabia and Her Royal Highness Princess Rima under her patronage. We performed an Ashtanga yoga series uh, with our team. And this is the team was preparing for the performance in that event. It was in the um, Sports Authority Stadium. This is Princess Rima, who's behind uh, getting yoga listed as a sport in Saudi Arabia. She supported me and adopted me. This was an interview in an Indian channel. So this was the theme for Janadriya festival. We had Vrikshasan, this tree pose. So pe visitors came and they practiced yoga in Riyadh in Janadriya festival. This is from our trip in Rishikesh. These are all Saudi yoga teachers. We have been invited by Swami Baba Ramdev. And he took us on a tour to his university and research center. We got the publications as well, and we were impressed. So in that group, six were doctors and yoga teachers as well. And they loved the, the trip because we have been exposed to yoga as a medical science in that uh, visit. Uh, this is the Yoga Ratna Award from the Asian Yoga Federation by the Chief Minister of Kerala. I was awarded in September. And this is a picture that I love. Thank you so much.